Yes. Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to worship this morning. Um, I was watching that, and, and I'm thinking, you know, when you see things, and I, my mind works a lot different to other people, and I start getting ideas, and I'm thinking, I reckon, come Christmas, we could get the vicar to do that up here. So, uh, so I'm going to have a word with Caroline, and we can... Uh, I think that could be a live performance, and then we can actually stream it as well. But hey, so welcome this morning. Um, notices are packed, obviously, with uh, the the coming week, the mission week. Uh, that's uh, we've finally got here. All the planning, and uh, although there's still planning in process, there's still things in process. But it starts today with the bishop this afternoon. Uh, for those who want to come at half past six. Uh, be here for six o'clock, service starts at half past six. So if you want to come this afternoon, it's a commissioning service. Bishop Philip is coming over. We've invited all those people that are uh, helping us in, in whatever way, be it uh, local companies, um, uh, volunteers. Um, so everybody's welcome. So at six uh, for a service at half past six um, this afternoon. So then the week starts in earnest. Tomorrow morning um, is the big start so anybody who has um put their name down to volunteer um we will meet here at nine o'clock for um bacon bodies and coffee uh, and then prayer and people will be sent out to the various um activities for the week and all the the various activities are there uh, that you can you can see that you can get involved in what i will say if you haven't put your name down for anything yet um i urge you to you know to to continue to think about it if it you find out that on tuesday or wednesday you realize you've got some free time if you can come if you come along for nine o'clock uh, and, and and have a coffee uh, and then you know we, we can put you to, to use for that day or, or however long you're here the only thing i would say is on the wednesday uh point to know obviously and i'm guessing weather permitting but it's going to be good because we've had a word it's going to be good uh, next week um, the Wednesday morning is um, the uh, open air communion service at 10 o'clock. Um, so we're starting the day with that. So if people still want to come here for 9 o'clock, that's fine. It's just that you then have to go back down to King's Coat Park. So on that Wednesday morning, um, it's uh, sort of get there for about quarter to 10 ish. And, and if the weather is right, we'll have the, the communion on the Wednesday morning. And we just thought it'd be a nice gesture to do it there where we're working on that day. So the communion for Wednesday is at King's Coat Park. Um, but of the, all the other days, as I say, and the other thing to, to note on Wednesday um, in the afternoon, um, there's a, a barbecue six to eight um, at the rugby club at King's Coat Park. Um, so people are invited to, to come along to that. Keith and Jenny Raby are gonna come and play uh, some, some Christian music, a uh, bit of a barbecue and just a, a uh, bit of fellowship, and hopefully we'd, by, by, by Wednesday we would have finished what we're doing at King's Coat Park, so it's a, a pat on the back for the volunteers that have been there. So it's quite a, a busy, busy week. There's a lot going on. Um, so have a look at your notices, but please, 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 think about it during the week. If you, you, know, you thought you weren't going to be available on any of those days, but something's come up or something's changed that you're available, please do, do just come along. If you find that you, you can't uh, make a morning, but you can an afternoon, there'll, there'll be people here uh, the, the catering team who, um, who have, have got a task and a half next week um, they're going to be here for most of the morning so you could always come here and find out where people are uh, and, and you know if you can only make the afternoon but please um, it's about it's very much about the church being taken out of the building out there to the community to show people and allow God to use us to show the love that he has for them and that's what the week is about so um I keep saying it, and I know uh, the catering team have heard me say it, stay flexible. Obviously, we put this down, things can change, and, and we've, we, you know, we're, we'll, we'll deal with that as, as and when they do. So be patient with us. If we say something's happening on a Tuesday, and for whatever reason we have to postpone it, please be patient with us. Um, we, we, we'll just go with, with the flow, and we'll be flexible. And we'll, uh... but, but people who, um, who can't come or, or are busy or committed, please take the notices home. And each day, just look at what's going on and just pray over that, uh, you know, pray over that, that, that event or what that's happening on that day. So you can just look at the notices and pray for those volunteers who are doing specific tasks. It all helps, it all counts. So, so thank you um, for that. 
And I think um, that's about it on, on the notices. As I say, the focus is, is really very much on this week. But keep abreast with things because after this week, it doesn't stop next Sunday. This is just the start of this um, Kairos moment. This is the start of it, and there's much more to, to, to come after that. So please keep in, in tune with what's going on. You know, we will need volunteers for, for further things, so please stay in tune with that and, and ask what's going on and, and uh, get, get involved. Let's, uh, let's turn things around. And I think that's about it, unless there's any other... Okay, thank you for that. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let's pray together. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. So we come to our first hymn, uh, and let's take the roof off, because we're allowed to sing now, remember? Okay, so let's take the roof. Our first hymn is Bless the Lord on My Soul. Ten thousand <laughs> Yes, we'll worship his holy name. 
Let's go with our prayers of, of confession. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, our maker and our redeemer, this is your world and we are your people. Come among us and save us. We have willfully misused the gifts of creation. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have seen the ill treatment of others and have not gone to their aid. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have condoned evil and dishonesty and failed to strive for the justice. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have heard the good news of Christ but have failed to share it with others. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have not loved you with all our heart, nor our neighbours as ourselves. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. But the good news is, may the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and the glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we're going to sing again. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Three verses. Three verses. And uh, Vicky is going to give us our reading. The reading this morning is taken from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 20. This can be found on your pew Bibles on page 1177. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armour of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armour of God, 
so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm, then with the belt of truth buckled round your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Pray also for me that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me, so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly, as I should. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's just bow our heads, shall we, as we come to pray. Father, for some that will be a familiar uh, reading. And Lord, this morning, even if the words might be familiar, we pray that you would open up that reading to us and help us to understand more about your will for us as we step out to serve you in these days. We pray this in your precious name. Amen. You might not know this, but in the past months, we've been planning a mission. (laughs) It it got a laugh, didn't it? I cannot tell you how much work has gone in to planning this mission. I can't even get close to telling you how much has gone in. And I am so grateful for everybody who has been involved. But uh, those who have been involved uh, with me have been teasing me a bit. Can't believe that, can you? Not for a moment. And uh, they've now coined a phrase. So when we face uh, a bit of uh, difficulty or opposition, uh, people are now saying to me, uh, well, I said it myself, well, it seemed a good idea at the time. Have you ever said that? And when you learn what the implications of this really good idea are, you think, ha, ah, it seemed a good idea at the time. Now, the thing is that, joking aside, when we step out and do something for God, when we step out into our community to take God's word and the truth out into the community, we enter a battlefield. There's no question about it. So, if, you fe- if you're sat there feeling, I can't give much to this mission week, for whatever reason, you can. And I can tell you what you can do. And I'm actually asking you to do this. Please, please do this. Take hold of that notice sheet, and every day cover the team with prayer. Please. Please. And you'll see why when I go through uh, what our reading is actually teaching us this morning. The thing is that entering a battlefield takes courage to keep moving forward. When we belong to Jesus, there is no escaping this battle. Well, no escaping this side of eternity or this side of heaven. But there is no escaping that we are in a spiritual battle. Now, it's quite interesting because uh, over the past couple of weeks, I've spent a bit of time with my son-in-law. Him and I have been making a chicken coop. What's that got to do with this sermon? Well, actually, the interesting thing for me is Junio is from Brazil. And Junio and uh, Lizzie have uh, come back from Brazil, and we've had some really interesting conversations around 
how spiritual battles are far more prominent in Brazil. Interesting. But that, sure, that's what they see. So, actually, this is real. Don't sort of, uh, don't sort of dismiss this. So, witchcraft and Ouija boards and satanic worship and all of those things are rife in this world. Not just in Brazil, but in this country. It's not just a, oh, a little bit of fun, or, oh, I'm going to go and see Gypsy Lee and get my tea leaves read. Those are spiritual forces at work. If we don't take them seriously, we are in peril. So just hear me. This is the seriousness of what I've got to say this morning. So please pray, (laughs) pray, and pray some more as God's people as we set out on this journey. Here are some words from a a World War II British soldier on VE Day in France. And I want to... I want uh, you just to hear this. So this is, this is the, bat- the battle is over, but there's still a little bit of fighting and reclaiming to do. We found village and towns, people, all who clustered beside the road, waving and throwing flowers and shouting words of encouragement as we sped by. If we pause for a moment's res- respite, amidst our own sweat and dust, they would run to greet us, arms outstretched, with tears of joy streaming down their cheeks. Without the struggle, the hard work, the sweat and the dust, there would be no tears of joy. And as believers in Jesus, we need to roll our sleeves up and get stuck into this spiritual battle. St. Paul said this in 2 Timothy, chapter 2. Join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. And he goes on to say in chapter 4 of 2 Timothy, Timothy, the time for my departure is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. So I want us to look at two questions this morning, and I promise you it does link very much with the reading, and we'll get on to that in a moment. But this is just laying the groundwork for us. Two questions to answer this morning. Who do we fight against, and how do we fight? So good questions, I hope. Really clear. Who do we fight against? The answer is simply our enemy who is seeking to destroy us. And the Bible tells us that there's three areas, which, if you'll forgive me, I've called the unholy trinity. So let's see if uh, we can remember. So here's a bit of a tester. At baptism services, we say to the newly baptized, and I'll see, I'll see how good this is, do not be ashamed to fight, to confess the faith of Christ crucified. Fight valiantly. Do you remember? Fight valiantly. Who are we fighting against? Sin, the world, and the devil. The unholy trinity. Sin, the world, and the devil. And remain faithful to Christ to the end of your life. The world our sinful selves, and the devil. That's the unholy trinity. The devil is Satan, whatever name that the Bible gives it, and him, and in our series in Exiles, we heard in 1 Peter, your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Trying to push a Christian over the edge, tempting in whatever way. Satan has allies in the spiritual world. And this is how we can get hooked into the wrong spiritual forces. 
And in our reading today, in Ephesians 6, 12, we are told this, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, so it's not personal, it's never personal, our struggles. Never personal. Our, our battle, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, and against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. This is a spiritual battle. It's not a physical battle. It's and. and Sometimes this can have been misinterpreted in the past, but this is serious stuff, but it's unseen. Look at these words. It's not personal. Christ has won the decisive victory at the cross and by his resurrection. If you like, D-Day, to use another World War II analogy, D-Day is over and the advance through enemy territory is underway. But the devil is fighting a rear guard action, and if we lower our guard, he is ready to pounce. Okay, Satan, the devil. Secondly, our sinful nature is in alliance with the devil and is also our deadly enemy. Our exile series, again, 1 Peter 2.11, talked about living godly lives in a pagan society. Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners, as exiles, to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Our hearts belong to Christ, and yet our sinful nature is at war within us. How do we put that to death? See, there's the second of the unholy trinity. Third, the world. The Bible is clear. In James 4, verse 4, we are told a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. The world attacks the church from both outside and inside, from outside and within. Outside pressure or persecution in order to get rid of the church. Are you aware, because you won't be unless you've gone to different sources rather than our own media, that today there will be people in Afghanistan who are Christians who are being shot for their faith? Are you aware that same battle is going on in Nigeria? Do you know this? You see, our media doesn't report this stuff. And that's partly what's happening in our world. The Barnabas Fund, I recommend you get their newsletters. Their newsletters which support the persecuted church. In this country, the attacks come not from guns or bullets, but from the pressure of a godless society. We see this on our TV news. What we receive is actually a, a godless representation of what is happening. Media, politics, and education. The intent is the same. The destruction of faith in Christ and the disarming of the church. The intent is for the church to become ineffective. But the world can also attack from within, like a cancer within the church, unless we guard our hearts and our minds. We spent a long time, haven't we, talking about this Holy Spirit, this Kairos moment over the course of this year as we come out of lockdown. We are relaunching. We have... Uh, can I, can I just comment on those wonderful signs outside church with the new logo on? And we are making a push, not just because it's the way to do it, but actually because we are identifying who we are and letting the world know. We're doing that unashamedly. And we're focusing, refocusing our groups throughout the church 
We're refocusing our groups and the things we do and why we do them because we are about winning people for Jesus and kingdom building. Okay, so that's my first little introduction. How do we fight this battle? Okay, I've got three things. Not with the world's weapons. Secondly, with the armor of God. And thirdly, with the strength of God. What are the world's weapons? Hatred, collaboration with evil, and violence. We must never, ever hate people. Remember, this is not personal. This is a spiritual battle. Love your enemies, Jesus says, and we must not use the weapons of the world. And in Ephesians 6.13, we're told, therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm. How many times does he say stand? Three. In fact, there's another one further down, so there are four. Withstand is another word he uses. But it, it reminded me, have you ever seen a Roman garrison with uh, you know, the way they, they stand with their shields interlocked? The armor of God is at first defensive. Summary of the armor of God is it's our very salvation. Now, here's the tester. Here's the tester for our reading. What page was it on, everyone? You're going to need it. What is the armor of God. And uh, I've got some helpers coming up, so uh, they're going to dress... You were wondering, weren't you, what the figure was. They're going to dress the figure. So what was the first thing on our amazing video with the dancing vicar that he put round his waist? The belt of truth, which is... You know, we find the truth in looking at Jesus' uh, life. And uh, it's quite interesting because the belt on a, a Roman soldier looks a bit more like this. It's sort of got leather between, but it, it actually protects uh, and uh, holds the whole thing together. Thank you, Holly. What's the, what's the second thing in our reading? Breastplate of... Righteousness. And okay, here's a little tester. What does the word righteousness mean? To be in a right relationship with and with each other. Wonderful. Look at this, my uh, able helpers. Wonderful. Notice that covers our heart and protects our heart. The breastplate of righteousness. Feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Brilliant. Shoes. Who's got shoes? Hey, well done, Rita. Give it a push. <laughs> Jesus, I, I, might, I might actually embarrass Caroline here, so uh, excuse me, Caroline. When I make a phone call to Caroline, um, I always end with three words. And uh, can anybody tell me what they think those three words might be? I love you. Jesus' last words. You see, people remember last words. That's the most important thing. What's the most important thing that I want Caroline to do when she's l to think about when she's last spoken to me? To hear those words. I love you. What were Jesus' last words? So we're talking about being sent out here. He said, go and make disciples. 
What an opportunity we have to obey our Lord and Saviour in this coming week. Okay, the next thing, you, you know in the dance, I can do these dance moves, I'm just not quick enough to keep up with the video. It is the shield of faith. Wonderful, and uh, Scarlett's coming up to uh, help me with this one. Well done, Scarlett. With, uh, do you know her cat? I named her cat this morning. Pink cat. <laughs> Come on, Scarlett. Chop, chop, chop. <laughs> the shield of faith that extinguishes all the fiery arrows. Wonderful. Thank you. Well done. And then lastly... What's the last bit of gear that we need? The helmet of salvation. Oh, thank you, Becky. <laughs> the helmet of salvation. Thank you. Wow. So those are the defensive things that we've got, but the helmet of that salvation it's about the way we think. The Bible has all sorts of references about renewing your mind. Don't think, about, don't think in the way the world thinks. Think in the way that you're taught in your faith. Think in a godly way, in the way that Jesus would. Well, well the sum up from all the defensive stuff is this. When we are confident in our relationship with Christ by grace through faith, when we are sure of Jesus' presence and power in our lives, then we are not vulnerable to what Paul calls those flaming arrows. They can be extinguished. All the different ways the devil tries to probe our weaknesses and call our faith into question. We don't do this as an individual. We do this as Jesus' body, the church. We do this together. I've got your back. I've got your back. It's a great expression, isn't it? And think about that Roman garrison with their shields interlocked. They don't just interlock it there, but they put them over the top as well, don't they? to extinguish those fiery arrows. When we work together, when we work together, it's quite an amazing thing. I absolutely love seeing those mission bags put together uh, last Saturday with a wonderful team that came and just helped put things in the bags so that we can hand them out next week. So, it's a couple of things missing. Well, there's only one from uh, our uh, soldier on the, uh, the board here, but weapons. In fact, when I was studying this, I thought, you know, we've been, to we've been told literally there's one weapon, which uh, Helen's going to come and put on the, uh, the board for me, which is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of of God. So, first weapon provided. Oh, he's going to go in like that, isn't he? Yeah. First weapon provided is, uh, is, is actually the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Study the Word of God. That is what gives you this, uh, th this weapon. Take it seriously. Take it seriously. And the second thing that is in our passage, it tells us, is the second weapon is prayer. Prayer turns the battle. Satan tries to keep us from praying. So, too busy, too much going on in my head. I, I've got some hints as to how we can help with uh, to our prayer life. 
But at this stage, let me just leave it that it's so important that we pray for one another. But also to be praying for our community. The prayer walking in the past month has been an absolute highlight. If you've missed the opportunity to go out prayer walking, then look up because we will be doing it again because prayer changes things. Prayer turns the battle. God longs as our Father to hear his children speaking to him and asking him. And he promises the gift of the Holy Spirit. Wow. Just by prayer, just by asking. We also know that um, the truth of God, God's word, deflects lies. That is Satan. Satan's greatest weapon. He is the father of all lies. That's a description that comes out. We need to work hard and be clear in our minds, remember the helmet of salvation, what the Bible teaches us, especially in areas where we know we are weakest. An army is only as strong as the weakest link. Military man, is that correct? Can you imagine that Roman garrison again? If one of the shields is down because the person can't uh, hold it, the fiery arrow can get in. We are here to encourage each other, to support each other, and to challenge each other. Not because it's personal, because it isn't because it's a spiritual battle that we all face and we are united in that battle because we love one another and we want to be effective in kingdom building in this church. We've got a free gig next week. I've never organized a gig before. Uh, I'm very grateful to Janet and to uh, Greg for helping me, but I probably put eight hours in on Friday trying to fill a form in, which we need completing and agreeing before that event can go ahead. You see, when we try to step out, resistance comes. And so, you know, just be encouraged. Stand firm, keep standing firm, and then take ground back. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Ephesians 6 verse 10 tells us, in ourselves we are weak, but in the Lord we can be strong and courageous to make this stand. Do not give ground by, uh, do not give ground, be unyielding, but do this together as his church representing Jesus, our Savior, Lord, and King. Praise God. He has equipped us for this battle. Praise God that the time is now. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you have fought and won at an unimaginable cost. Can't imagine that cost. We pray that by your power and victory, that you would equip us with your armor, that we may take our stand faithfully as your foot soldiers this coming week and beyond for the extension of your kingdom and for the glory of your name, the name of Jesus that is above all names. Amen. Thank you, thank you, Peter. Um, let's let's stand and we're going to sing. We're going to sing Take My Life and Let It Be.
Let's remain standing as we say together the creed. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And I invite Ian now, he's going to come up and lead us in our prayers. Thank you. Yes, let us pray. Let us start with praying today's collect together. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray and to give more than either we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask. But through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Father, thanks. Thanks for the calling to serve you. Thanks for your church. Thanks for your leaders, for our leaders. We pray for our bishops, for Julian, Joe and Philip, and for all who serve you under them. And for our leaders here at Trinity, for Peter, for Matthew, and for all who serve you here under them. Anoint them, anoint us with your Holy Spirit to do great, to do even greater things for you. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And as we come as a parish to the beginning of our mission week, let's pray for God's protection and guidance upon us as we are reminded in what Peter's told us in that, first, in that sermon in our reading, we are in a war. We want to do the right thing for God. And this week, we're on the front line, maybe more than normal. Father, you have brought us safely to, to the beginning of this mission week. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this week we fall into no sin, we fall into no traps, neither into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, all our mission work, all that we do in your name may be ordered by your governance to do always that which is right in your sight and fruitful in the building of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray for the leaders of our nations, and especially for our own leaders, for our Queen and all who serve under her. Guide them in your ways, lead them in your truth, that they in turn may lead us in your truth. And help them to meet the challenges that are set before them. And as we pray for them, Father, we pray for our messed up, broken kind of world with all its pain. We particularly pray for the situation in Afghanistan for the implications there for its people, for the implications for the rest of the world. Father, we thank you that you have not lost control there. 
We pray that you will thwart the forces of evil in that nation. We stand against those forces in Jesus' name. We pray that you would work out your purposes in that place for good. And we pray for all those other trouble spots in our world, all those other places of suffering which aren't as newsworthy. And we pray, Father, bring your peace. Let your love be poured out. Lord, in your mercy, hear your prayer. And we pray for that same love to be poured out in our communities here, not, during this, not just during this mission week, but after that, as we continue to live here, so may, love, so may your love be continued to be poured out. We pray for our schools, for our communal places and buildings, for all who seek to do good here, for your blessing upon them and upon the work that they do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who we know to be in need of our prayers, especially for Margaret McIntyre, Angela Neal, Jean Neal, Arthur Thompson and Susan Sidebottom. We pray for the friends and family of all who mourn in our community. And at this time we pray for all in our community who've lost family members in Afghanistan and who are particularly grieving at this time. Father, come by your Holy Spirit and bring your healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, Father, we pray for ourselves. We pray what Paul prayed at the end of that reading, that whenever we open our mouths, words may be given to us, that we might fearlessly make known the mystery of your gospel, those words of eternal life. Keep us in your truth. Help us to be strong in you. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and equip us to continue as your faithful soldiers and servants to the end of our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we sum up our prayers in the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So as the words of our final hymn tell us, let's stand up, stand up for Jesus.
May the Father from whom every family on earth and heaven receives its name strengthen you with his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. And the blessing of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.